Hey gang, welcome back to another video. I was recently wondering whether or not it was possible to recreate these old lightning effects boxes that were pretty popular when I first started haunting, but they're not available anymore. And the options for creating lightning effects that are on the market today are pretty expensive. So I did a deep dive into Amazon and I found some technology that I think just might fit the bill and is pretty affordable. So let's see if it works. I stumbled across this $20 DIY light organ kit. I knew I'd have to assemble it and that would require some soldering, but I figured for the price and how I was planning on modifying it, this might be a good solution. So after I checked to make sure that all of the components were accounted for, and a quick look at the instructions, it was time to start assembly. If you're considering tackling this project, fair warning, there is a bit of soldering. Now I won't force you to watch me do the entire thing, just know that you'll need to have a bit of patience, but your patience will be rewarded. If soldering isn't your thing, don't worry, they also sell completely assembled versions to save you time. You'll just need to do a bit of modification to one part, but I'll cover that in a moment. Now, even though I've used this kit once before, I refresh my memory with a quick review of the instructions and set off to solder all of the components. Okay, maybe I lied. This is all the soldering, but at least it's a time lapse. If the concept of soldering seems a little overwhelming, just remember, if I can do it with nine fingers, you can do it with ten. The biggest question I had for this project was whether or not I could substitute an RCA connection where the small microphone is supposed to go. So once I finished soldering all the resistors in place, it was time to make a short RCA cable and wire it to the board. And with the RCA cable installed, it was time to add power. To make it easy, I'm just using a few inches of wire and attaching a barrel connector. I'll do the same for the output, which is where I'll connect the light. The next thing to do was to put the light organ into some kind of project box for protection. I had this one on hand that was a close enough fit, but needed a little modification. So I cut an opening into the top to accommodate the light organ, and sanded a notch on the side to allow the connections to exit the box. And with everything in place, it was time to wire it up and test my theory. connected the RCA cable from the light organ to one side of the stereo outputs from this small amplifier. The other stereo output is connected to a speaker. Then I connected the light organ's output to the floodlight using some barrel connectors. I found this small, cool white LED floodlight that will work with the 12 volt power output of the light organ. Now you'll notice I said cool white, which is in reference to the lamp's color temperature. Color temperature is not an indicator of the heat output of a bulb, but rather it lets us know what the look and feel of a light will be using warm and cool colors. Here's a great reference scale to give it a bit more context. In this case, I've chosen a floodlight with a color temperature of 6500 Kelvin, or sometimes listed as 6500 K, and it puts off a bluish tint similar to the bluish purple tint of lightning. These numbers are helpful when trying to choose the best light for your scene. So just remember, the higher the number, the cooler the light will look. The lower the number, the warmer it'll look. Last thing to do was to plug it into the 12 volt power supply, add some thunder sound effects to the amplifier, power it on, and see if it works. 
theory confirmed. Sort of. There's a caveat to this build. While there's a sensitivity knob on the light organ, it's not very effective since the light organ is designed to work with a small microphone and not a line audio input. It may work even better if there's a potentiometer added between the amplifier and the light organ module to lower the audio to a volume that the module can handle, which should, in theory, make the sensitivity knob work more effectively. Aside from that, I'd say this is a pretty great solution. Well, that looks like a lightning effects box to me. Now, I know this project had its fair share of soldering, and that might turn some people off, but I think if you give yourself a chance, you may find that soldering is not quite as difficult as you thought. That's going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.